Today I have the Luminaire QAV210 build to bring to you. Before I get started on going through the kit contents here, let me just point out that I have built its little baby brother in, a, in an earlier 4-inch com comparison. This is the QAV180 and uh, it was uh, just in a, a small comparison with the Mitsuko just to show some different 4-inch quads. And I will say that it flies well, but the design issue that I found with that one that I pointed out in the build came true. I've uh, had to replace this top plate twice now, and after the second time, enough was enough, I fitted an extra row of standoffs here. So this one here and the one on the other side are additional, um, and I had to replace the rear ones, that's why they're different colour to the front. So it does have some shortcomings and uh, I expect that uh, this QAV210 might have uh, some similar issues. But uh, anyway, let's have a look at the kit contents. So some Luminaire stickers on a card here. I'll put them aside to make some room. The main component here, a monoplate base. This is a 3mm carbon fibre base and... Uh, uh, the quality of the carbon fibre is excellent, the quality of the machining is, uh, is excellent from what I can see and uh, it's very similar to the 4 inch, obviously it has longer arms but they're actually, this V here is spaced wider apart which has me a little bit concerned about the strength of this centre section here um, considering the arms are so wide and look so strong this sort of appears as, the, as maybe a weak point in it it's definitely where most of the flex is, uh, which um, could be a good thing if it's going to absorb an impact and allow for some flex. But uh, yeah, that's the base plate. It's, uh, it's three millimetres and uh, not much else I can really say about that. The top plate is the other main carbon fibre piece. Like its little QAV180 brother, it's a 1.5 millimetre top plate. And uh, similarly, the quality of the carbon fibre is, uh, is very good. This one feels a little bit dusty, but uh, yeah, the quality of the carbon fibre is very good. The machining on this, though, isn't quite up to the same standard as the base. Uh, it's a little bit rough around the, uh, where it's been machined, um, particularly on one side, which could possibly indicate a blunt cutting bit. And uh, I can see yeah, some quite small fine hairs poking through around the edges there so uh, yeah nonetheless I think it'll be quite okay and uh, but it is still only a 1.5 millimeter top plate it has camera side plates these are just one millimeter side plates and these have multiple mounting holes for the 1177 so I'll be using those I don't plan on using this front camera plate which I guess would be for a board camera so I'll put that aside it comes with some nylon standoffs, uh, two bags of them, screws, uh, standoffs and some nylon nuts, plenty of those for attaching the PDB that also comes with it. This is the Luminaire 4 power PDB which I'm also fitting to the other quads that don't have an integrated PDB. Uh, so it comes with one of those. It comes with an XT60 pigtail, some 16 gauge wire on it, so I'll probably put that aside and use uh, something with uh, maybe 14 gauge to be consistent with some of my other builds in this series. It has uh, some cable ties, a selection of small cable ties, a Luminaire uh, battery strap, this is the narrow or small version. I've actually got uh, the wider ones, uh, like I've got on the, the 180 here that I'll be using, that are common uh, to across all the, the builds, so they all have the same battery strap, but uh, nonetheless it comes with a, one of these. Uh, it comes with some battery foam. I had this on the QAV180. It lasted a month or so, uh, but in the end the foam basically collapsed. So it's, uh, it, it's, it comes in the kit, but it's, um, it's fairly poor quality. It doesn't last anywhere near as long as the high-density foam that I cut out of these, uh, uh, the packaging from the VTXs. But uh, nonetheless, it's in the kit. Hardware. It has uh, the M2 motor screws for the 1800 series motors, so they come in the kit. 
and there's some additional M3 by 5 screws that uh, I don't expect I'll be using but uh, there's a good selection of screws they're all steel screws, uh, zinc plated I presume but uh, yeah they're not aluminium or titanium they're just steel uh, then have a little uh, rubber piece for the pigtail for the power pigtail a grommet to go in the top plate it has little landing gear standoffs which go under the arms there's four of those and then some little uh, rubber feet that go around them the four or the six sorry six main standoffs are aluminium and uh, typical length and size and weight and it has a good selection of M3 by 6 uh, motor screws and frame screws. I think these will be fine for the motor. In fact, the M3 by 5 is probably okay as well for the uh, motors I'll be using. But um, I do think they're a little bit short for going into these standoffs from my experience with the QAV 180. Uh, of course, extra length would mean extra weight. But um, yeah, I definitely I bent a couple of these on the 180 and it was right at the very end and it was really only because the screw didn't go in far enough in my opinion but uh, anyway uh, that's the hardware kit and that's what we get with the QAV210 now for the weights and measures of the QAV210 Sharpoo edition so cost of the frame US 75 plus shipping it's part of the reason I chose it is it's a, a mid priced frame uh, from a high quality supplier so um, and it's, uh, it's got a big name behind it, Sharpoo, not quite sure what he did for it, but I'm uh, um, surprised he didn't point out the lack of standoff in the back there. Um, the assembly went together quite okay. These camera side plates were pretty uh, tight tolerances to get them in. I had to file down uh, the slots a little bit to get the uh, plates in, very minor, and uh, just shows I've got good tolerances. However, after screwing the top plate on, I noticed that uh, it might be difficult to see with the camera there, but there's a bit of a bow in the top plate. I'm going to have to, when I disassemble it, file some bits out of the stops on this side plate so this uh, top plate sits down flat. The, um, the side plates are just a bit too high or a bit long there. The, uh, these landing gear, I really don't understand that either, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Landing gear like this sort of might make sense if you're landing on concrete, but with rubber feet on there, it's just going to land, come in, grip and flip over anyway. So, um, they, yeah, I'm going to leave them on there because they're part of the design, but uh, I'm not quite sure whether they offer any real function. So the quad stance is 129 millimeters between the front and rear and 165 millimeters left to right and the weight of it so I'm measuring with PDB without motor screws so it's the same for all of the quads I'm measuring and uh, the weight of the frame comes in at 95-96 grams in, uh, in that format the QAV 210 build is about 80% done now. Uh, I've uh, mounted most of the electronics, ESCs, motors, uh, flight controllers all done under there. The receiver's uh, been depinned and uh, sits at the back of the frame here, wrapped with a, a cable tie. Now, um, there's probably 100 QAV210 build videos, so I'm not going to uh, bore you with all the details of my build. But uh, since I broke a lot of top plates on my 180, I've become a master at setting up the antennas for these, the receiver antenna, using uh, their supplied cable ties. Uh, or little cable ties, which if you need to source them. So let me run you through my process of doing it. First thing you need to do is put your pigtail in place if you're using one uh, so that you get an idea of how much room you've got to work with on either side. And we're going to use these two small holes here to pass the antenna uh, up through. So uh, let me grab my, here's my 180 and we're going to end up with something that looks like this. So, so cable ties. There's a uh, They've got a sort of natural little bend in it, and we're going to use them opposite to, to the way that it's, uh, it's naturally bending. 
uh, take a note at this end, a little knobby little uh, lock on the end sticks out further on one side. So we're going to drop that down through the hole so that it sticks out over this side and the opposite with this one. So hopefully you can see that there. I'm going to drop it in this way. And that means that the sort of natural bends in them are bending in towards each other. We're going to end up bending them out. They're bending in towards each other. And that leaves us room down either side to pass the antenna cables up through there. So now it gets a bit tricky. And I'm sorry, I'm going to get my hands and everything else in the way. But uh, push that out of the way for the moment. So I'm going to pass one antenna wire. I'm passing it up the inside of alongside the cable tie close to the pigtail probably best that that one fell out now I'm using the X4R S bus receivers from FreeSky and I find there's just enough room in the hole to do this you could run a light file round file in there if you wanted to so I'm just pushing it through far enough that it reaches the top of the cable tie like that. So the length is equal to the top of the cable tie. Now I'll do the same on the other one. Okay, now those are pulled through and even with the tops of the cable ties. I've got some 2.5 millimeter heat shrink here and I'm going to stick that over the top. So remember these antenna wires are running up the inside edge of the cable tie there. Pass that over. Another piece of 2.5 on the other side. Now close this heat shrink off. Okay, so I'll just turn that over so you can see. So the cables run up the inside there. So we've got end of cable tie, antenna, pigtail, antenna, cable tie. And uh, when I put the lid on, they're just going to have a little bit of a loop out the back here, which is uh, quite alright, I think. If you're concerned about that at all, or it's a bit long, uh, you could actually have put a bit of uh, heat shrink around those together, or you can put a cable tie around them later. Now I can see or feel where the end of the clear section is of the antenna so the top 33 millimeters is the bit that's actually the antenna so I'm just going to go below that a little bit and on the outside edge here I'm just going to heat it up about 10 millimeters or half an inch below the heat in there and then bend that out to about 45 degrees. Match it up on the other side. And the same again. You sort of don't want to heat this too quickly, otherwise it does go brittle. There we go. Now we've got our diversity with a rough 90 degree angle between it. I'm not quite done yet. So a piece of 6mm heat shrink over the top. Slide it down as far as it will go. In this case, it's just below.
And there you have it. That's that's my method for antenna on the QAV series frames, QAV 180, QAV 210, QAVR or QAVR race blade. And uh, I put my VTX antenna on there. And uh, another thing, if you wanted to, you can actually cable tie them together. Ideally, you shouldn't have these two too close together, but inevitably, it is the best place to have both of them on the back of the quad uh, to allow for the forward angle flight that we uh, that uh, we so love. Now to weigh the QAV210 in the same format that uh, all the other ones have been weighed with the VTX antenna, uh, props, etc. And the complete one comes in at 325 grams without a battery. And when we add a 4S 1300 graphene battery, exactly 500 grams.